What's up, peeps? It's Dr. Living Good. Welcome to the show. It is pumpkin spice season. Wow, where did the year go? Let's do this. Do collagen supplements really work for aging, especially with the skin, and why they're incredibly important for multiple areas of the body, but do they actually work for the skin? How should you use them? What are the key components? I'm gonna give you my top five things that make them work that actually will help the skin from the inside out and the outside in, especially number four is something if you are taking collagen or using it regularly that you might be missing to activate it, to get it to work even better for you. I wanna share those with you. So let's dive in to my top five. Now collagen, one of the most abundant proteins in the body, it is the connective glue that provides the structure for your skin, cartilage, bone, all the connective tissue right? And so it makes up a vast majority of it. Now, as we age, collagen production naturally decreases and works against us. That's why this is such a big question when it comes to wrinkles and aging. It contributes to a decline in our physical function and our appearance with the form of wrinkles because that connective tissue just doesn't have the not so spry anymore. Now, Journal of Dermatology 2021, the study concluded that 90 days of collagen supplementation can decrease wrinkles and improve skin hydration and elasticity. So the answer is unequivocally yes. How you use it on the outside, on the inside, what do I take it with? What's the best form? I'm going to break that down for you today. A 2022 study with 100 participants showed that oral supplementation of low molecular weight of collagen could improve wrinkles. So these collagen peptides, it helps elasticity, helped hydration of the skin. And it was a great builder of the barrier and integrity of the facial skin area with like adverse effects, like from sunburn and things that damage it. We're gonna talk about these in a moment. It helps to prevent from those things. So unequivocally, yes, some solid research showing it. There's some goods and some bads out there though, but let's break these down. Give you my top five ways to increase collagen and how to properly use it. Number five, on the skin, let's just look right at it. Using collagen on the skin, is that a good idea or not? Well, collagen as a molecule is too big to get absorbed into the skin. So putting it on your skin, if you have a cream or something that's touting that, not really the route we'd want to go. What is the best for the skin? Well, give it some of the precursors, right? Using vitamin C, precursor to collagen, vitamin A and E, very important for antioxidants, free radical damage that can happen to the skin from sunburns and chemicals. Hyaluronic acid is a good one for the skin, but the body can absorb the co collagen through the skin. So not that you rub your collagen powder on there, but you might have a, a cosmetic product that is touting that. You're better off taking it from the inside out as opposed to outside in. But C, A, E, hyaluronic acid, and some good ones to be using on the skin to decrease sunburn. I like coconut oil before on the skin, helps to stimulate blood flow. I like aloe vera after if you were to have some skin damage like sunburn, but those are some of the main things to focus on from a skin perspective on the outside for a skincare regimen. Number four, this is a big one. If you're taking collagen, you might be missing the cofactors. Increase the cofactors so the collagen factory that exists in your body can produce. Now you're putting in extra collagen, taking it in the peptide form means it's hydrolyzed, it's busted up, you detangle, it's like an unbraiding hair. So then the body can use the hair to make its own braids on the inside. Make sense? Did that land? I like to make health simple. So what we want to do is give the body the things that it needs because it's not just the braid of the hair, you need the hair tie, right? And you may need some detangler and you need a brush. All right, those are the cofactors, okay? So these cofactors that are needed from an oral perspective that has to go along with the collagen, if your collagen doesn't have this in it, then you might want to pay attention to it, but of switching potentially. Vitamin C is very important. It is a precursor to it. So if you're putting collagen peptides into the body, you're already got an untangled form. The body's gonna be able to use that raw material. It's gonna ship it to the factory, right? It's gonna say, okay, we've got a nice load of resources, but it needs those cofactors in order to push it through the factory and actually make the collagen, vitamin C being one of those. Zinc is another one. Magnanese is another. CoQ10 is a big factor of just protecting from an antioxidant perspective. It's not required, but it's a good protector. Glycine, proline, copper, absolutely required in order to produce collagen. So vitamin C, zinc, magnesium, glycine, proline, and copper is what I like to see a lot of in order to produce collagen. Now, collagen peptides are gonna be a good source of glycine and proline. Bone broth, some foods we're gonna talk about in a moment will help that, but you need to add in the copper. You need to add in the zinc. You need to add in the manganese. That's why you need to add in the vitamin C and ideally from a fruit source. Okay, not just pure ascorbic acid from a chemical source, oftentimes made from corn. So in mine, I use a collagen plus a multivitamin. So you're getting two supplements in one, but the reason I do that is because you get all these cofactors with it, so you'll actually get more 
out of the collagen that you're taking, your body can use it in case you're missing those cofactors. Okay. So those are the main cofactors and the molecules that need to be present in order for that collagen production factory to take place and to work. And these simpler molecules can be absorbed through the GI tract more easily when they're taken together like that. To help those get into the system even more, is where I'm going with my notes next, is we want to decrease the amount of sugar that we're eating. We want to make sure that we're not smoking because that would damage some of those antioxidants and cofactors like vitamin C and CoQ10. We want proper rest. We want some peace management. Can't manage your stress. You need to manage your peace. And then we want to increase you know, some of the peptides. So let's break those down a little bit as three, two, and one to help increase the molecules getting into the digestive tract more easily, getting those cofactors in. By decreasing your sugar and your smoking, your body is more fat adaptive, which means it's more absorptive. And when you lower sugar, you're usually increasing fat and increasing clean proteins, collagen being one of them. So decreasing the sugars and replacing them with the other healthy macros is gonna help you absorb more of these nutrients, more of these minerals. And if you get them in more of a chelated form, in a more natural form, then you're gonna be able to form the collagen easier. Smoking is going to break down vitamin C. It's gonna to have to try to neutralize those free radicals that are involved with that. It's also going to break down coenzyme Q10, which is gonna be a big impact on your heart. That's why smoking is so bad for it. Now, when you get number two, proper rest, your body can recharge, the factories kick up at night. So you start producing the connective tissue, you start producing the collagen, it starts repairing the joints, the damage, the connective tissue that got hit that day, including your wrinkles and your face, okay? So this is why people that smoke, that eat a lot of sugar, that don't get a lot of sleep, wrinkle faster because you're going against all the cofactors and you're going against the collagen production factory. And then we gotta manage that stress down, breathing exercises, times of gratitude, peace management through the day is something we teach in my book and in my challenges throughout. Now, final step number one to increase collagen production is to make sure you're taking proper clean protein and you can get them from two different sources. Bone broth, you wanna make your own. You go get bones from a market, you steep them. 18 to 24 hours in, you can do it in broth or water. You can have herbs, you can have you know, things to make it taste some salt, the minerals and steep it, make your own bone broth. Excellent source of a lot of those amino acids, glycine, proline, the precursors to make the collagen. Or you can take straight up collagen peptides. We want them hydrolyzed, which means they're going to be unraveled. They're not going to be linked together like unbraided hair. So then the body can braid it and make the connective tissue. Make sure this is very important. They are grass fed and tested for heavy metals. The process of taking collagen and breaking it down so that it can be edible in a powder form involves metal machines and that metal can end up in your collagen. I make sure all mine is tested and I make sure it comes from grass fed cows. Add in the cofactors. That might be the most important factor you're missing. Vitamin C, zinc, manganese, the glycine, the proline are going to come with it. Copper is the other one to make sure you're adding in with it. That's how you can get the most benefit out of the collagen. Research shows from two prominent studies that it helps the wrinkles, it helps the skin, the hydration, the elasticity, and the connective tissue of your joints, let alone the stability of your gut and your immune system. If you wanna know nine additional benefits of collagen peptides, I made this video right here. You can check it out and dig in even further. Collagen peptides, I love it. I put a link to mine below as well, the one I use. That's grass-fed and tested.